Good evening, pilots, and welcome back to the channel. This is Overkill bringing you another, I would say, review, but uh, it's more of a recommendation. Um, one of the things that I tend to do a lot is I'm always searching for different utilities, different programs that, uh, whether it be for, to aid in mission uh, creation or your control setup, whatever it may be, um, I'm always looking for, for uh, utilities to make things a little bit better and more enjoyable, whether um, it be in functionality or, like I said, in creation content. Um, and today, what we're going to be talking about is key mapping. Key mapping is one of those things that tends to uh, be a hot topic in the forums. Um, you have updates that are clearing config files. You have um, the default controls uh, uh, schemes that aren't able to register, for example, two-stage switches for the Thrustmaster Warthog without tinkering with Lua files and scripts and things of that nature. Um, so I thought that this would be a really good opportunity to... Um, show you guys this. Um, as you see here on the screen, this is RS Mapper developed by one of our uh, community members, Aventar. Um, it's a really slick, very lightweight, and by lightweight I mean that it doesn't require a whole lot of resources on the machine. You won't even notice that it's running, so there's no performance impact. Um, that makes it really simple to both create um, extensive profiles for the different aircraft. Um, who this may be aimed at, for example, is if you are someone who doesn't have the money or maybe you don't have the space for Thrustmaster Warthogs and the MFDs from, from Thrustmaster or, you know, all those different control schemes that, that we all come up with, right, or the, the A10C control panels. Um, if, if you don't have the ability to do all this stuff, so you're very limited on buttons, right, you find yourself always struggling to, to map buttons somewhere and you're always having to sacrifice one button for another, this might be a software for you. Or if you're just someone like myself who likes to be able to map as much as I can to the controller, so that way I'm always hands-on as often as possible. I hate reaching for the keyboard. I primarily fly in VR. Um, so one of the most nuisance things that you can possibly do in VR is try to find the keyboard. Okay? And it really pulls you from the immersion, too. So, again, a... Uh, uh, situation where you might want to use that. Um, it has a plethora of, of uh, options. You can create multiple profiles for a single aircraft using a button on your controls to switch between the profiles. So what I mean by profile is you have you open up a profile that has all of your controls um, and buttons available on that particular control. You can map them all to do one thing. You press a button, it switches to profile two, and every single one of those buttons can now do something completely different. Um, the only caveat there is, you know, keep a mental note of which profile you have currently selected. But other than that, really slick. The other thing that it really gives you is continuous press, short press, and long press functionality, as well as release functionality. Meaning, short press, I tap a button and let go real quick, the button does one thing. Long press, I hold the button for one second or more, that same button that I just short pressed does something completely different now because I held it down. Much like the uh, A10C in DCS has that option if you use the Thrustmaster Warthog. Um, by default, you know, you guys know what I'm talking about, you can do coolie hat uh, short and coolie hat longs, and you get different functionality based on what you're doing with those. So you can create that for all the controls. Um, the continuous and short press, continuous, um, I hold the trigger down, and as long as I hold that trigger down, the command is going to continue to repeat itself. Short press, I hold the trigger down, the command is only going to execute once. Okay, release, I push a switch on my Thrustmaster uh, throttle forward, it does one thing. When I release the switch, so I put the switch in the down position, it does something different. Okay, that's one of the functionalities that uh, the DCS software doesn't support by default is that uh, that release option, right? So uh, uh, example of that would be, on the, again, on the Thrustmaster Warthog throttle, it has a bunch of toggle switches. The three-stage switches, it recognizes the full forward and full aft position, but doesn't recognize the center position by default. On the two-stage switches, it recognizes the forward switch as one option, but doesn't recognize the down, the release of that button, right? So that's another example of, of one of the things that we struggle with in the default software. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get after it and see what this looks like. So you'll go ahead and go to this link here. You would download the software. Um, after you extract it, it'll have an execu executable in it. And once you go to the executable, you'll be presented with this. Okay, so here is the RS Mapper software. And first thing we're going to do is you could go to File and New. Okay, so it creates a new 
um, bank of profiles. Think of the file as a bank of profiles. So the advantage here is you're not restricted to just DCS. This is a key mapper. So it, it this works completely externally of uh, DCS world. So you can use this for any game you want. So let's say you created a new profile for DCS, right? Now we're going to go to edit and we're going to select the devices we want to be a part of this profile. Okay, so here's everything I currently have plugged in. I have my mouse, I have the DPR rudder pedals, I have one of the F16 MFDs plugged in. Yes, I have two of them, the other one's out in the garage. I've got another project going. And then we have what we're going to be using today, the Thrustmaster throttle and joystick for the Warthog. Okay, we click on that. Here's the two listed and boom, here they are. And then we're going to go to profile. So we're going to go new profile here. You have the default here. You don't really want to use that. I like to leave it blank. That way, you know, I know what's selected. So we're going to go new profile and let's just do the F15C. Okay. And we're going to hit OK. Now I'm going to, I'm not going to go through an entire setup here of the aircraft, but I am going to show you guys a few things of what I'm talking about. So let's talk first about uh, the short press and long press. So first off, I've selected the joystick, you can see that here, and you have your point of view hats, okay, and you can click on them, and again, you still have the same options you do with any other controls. So these are POV hats, so this would be the gray hat, the trim hat that we use on the, on the uh, Thrustmaster joystick, and then there's another one for the throttle. But we're more focused with the buttons, which is basically everything else that's on this thing. So let's find this guy here. Okay, this is one of my buttons on the th on the stick. And what I want this to do is, real quick, I want, when I short press it, so I tap it and release it, I want it to turn the radar on. So we're just going to go radar on off. And I'm going to hit I for the radar. Now, if I long press it, okay, sticking with the radar, I want it to switch between RWS and TWS. So we're going to do right alt and I. Okay, so I'm going to hit OK, boom, and we want to hit file save, obviously. And here's where you create it. So we're just going to do DCS2. Okay, call it a test here. Because I already have a whole bunch of profiles, obviously, so we're just going to hit save. Okay, now we've saved our controls. And you don't have to hit save every time, but just keep in mind, if you spend an hour you know, setting up a whole bunch of different controls, you get it configured just the way you want to get it all set, and you don't hit that save button and close it, well, the next time you go to open it, you're going to be kind of upset. So, golden rule, always save. So, we're going to come back into the sim here. We're going to... Okay, sorry about that, guys. My uh, recording software crashed. So, starting over here, I know that you guys saw the, the control setup, so we're going to go in here, and we're going to go to... Uh, we're going to find our button, and I'm going to hit the button once, short press, it should turn the radar on. Okay, now we've got the gun system up, so I'm going to switch it into BVR. There we go. Okay, so you can see we're currently in range while scan. So once again, I tap the button, turns the radar on and off. Now that same button, I'm going to hold it for one second or more. And you can see it switches between TWS. I'm going to hold it again. And it switches back. So you have your short press. And then we have our long press. Okay, that's the difference between the two. Okay, so that's one example of how to use this software that's pretty slick. Now, let's show you something else that I was talking about uh, earlier as far as being able to use the switches on the throttle. So let me clear all these. I'm not quite sure why they're all there. Apparently, I just did a reinstall of DCS not too long ago, so apparently it hasn't cleared all that. Uh, let's clear that guy real quick. Here we go, save myself some time later. All right, so let's go find the landing gear. That's a perfect example of something that I would use one of the toggle switches for. So, the toggle switch on the Thrustmaster Warthog, okay, on the throttle. So I'm going to push one of my switches forward. This is a two-stage switch. It has up and down. That's it, right? So here's in the up position. Boom, it recognizes the control. But if I reset it and I go in the down position, notice it doesn't do anything. Okay, it's not picking anything up. Back into the up position, it finds it. So this is what I meant by toggle switches, DCS by default does not recognize the down position. On a three-stage switch, okay, so there's the forward, there's the full down, but if I go into the middle, it doesn't recognize anything again. So again, one of those hindrances, right? So you if, technically you lose functionality. So let's use RS Mapper to solve that problem. So let's find our throttle. 
And let's find that switch. And all I'm doing is looking for a switch that's depressed here. There it is, that one right there. This is the one that I'm messing with right here. So, in the forward position, okay, full up, we want the landing gear to go up. So we're just going to type gear up. That way we can identify it. And it's going to be left control and G. And then when I release it, so right now, think of it as pushing a button. Even though it's a toggle switch, think of it as a button. So it's pushing the button, okay, and that button's held down. Again, it's a, it's a two-stage switch, so until I pull it back, that switch is going to stay. So now we're going to talk about release. What happens when the button is released? Well, we want the gear to go down. So it's going to be left shift and G. And you can, when doing a letter or the number row, you can just type the letter, and boom, you got it. So... Again, file save, keeping things smart here. Let's go back to our game and just watch the gear handle. So, there's the release. You can see the gear coming down. Gear switch up. Okay, boom. And all it's doing is just tapping the button once, so it's not holding the key down. So you don't have to worry about like a, a scroll lock or anything like that, key lock. Okay, now one last thing I'm going to show you guys here real quick and let you get after it is the continuous use. So if we go into... our controls again, and let's find button 6, because that should be the two-stage trigger. So the Thrustmaster has two-stage two stage trigger. So there's stage 1, and you can see button 1 depressed there, and then watch button 6 there on the right. That's the second stage of the trigger. Okay, so we're going to use stage 2, and we're just going to call this one Cannon Fire, right, for the Vulcan. And we're going to come down here, and since it's not a key on a number row or a letter, we've got to go down and find it. Find the space bar. And let me show you guys what I'm talking about here with the repeat. So I'm just going to leave it just as is. I won't worry about saving this time. And let's put us back in the gun modes with C. And I'm just going to, I'm going to trigger and hold the button down, right? So I'm holding the trigger down. Okay. You can see what it did there, okay? It didn't do much. So now, if we go back into our mapper, and we go to continuous, okay? We're going to hit OK, and we're going to hit resume, and I'm going to hold the trigger down again and I let go. Holding. So as long as I hold that button down, it's going to continue to fire. So there's your continuous versus um, the burst, okay? If you just um, set this as, if you remove the repeat and continuous, it's only going to tap the button once, okay? It's going to be a real quick thunk on your keyboard, okay? If you set the continuous, it's going to hold that down until you let go. Now, there is actually one more thing I want to show you guys, and this is extremely helpful for people who either, A, again, are like me and just hate coming off of the controls, um, or someone who is very limited to the number of controls and buttons they have. And that's going to be the profile switch. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a new profile, and I'm going to call this F15C2. Okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to... Let's find a button here, a button that we haven't used. So let's use this guy. And we're just going to go trigger. And all we're going to do is come down here, change profile. And we're going to go back to F15C. Okay. So when I tap that, boom, the profile has just changed back into the profile we were initially working with. And then if I come here, and that same button, I'm going to have it go to profile 2. So now, when I hit every time I hit that button, I'm switching between the two profiles. Now, you could do this endlessly, okay? You could have 50 profiles for one freaking plane if you can keep up with that many buttons. Because the caveat to this is you have to remember which profile you're currently in. Okay, but an example here is the first time I push it, it would go into profile 2. Then in profile 2, I would tell it to go to profile 3. Then in profile 3, have it go to 4, etc. Or maybe have it go 
to three, and then have the next time it goes back to one and goes right back through the process. So you could really, you could, this could be endless. With one button, you could switch through endless number of profiles. Okay? So that's an advantage, again, like I said, if you're someone like me who just hates coming off the controls. For example, I typically have two uh, profiles for each aircraft, and all it is is a config profile, meaning camera setup. So I hit a button, it goes into a, a, a uh, config profile, so then all of my buttons will zoom the camera in or zoom it out, adjust the seat up, down, you know, things of that nature, things that I wouldn't ever want bound once I'm comfortable. So I get in the aircraft, I go into that config, I put my camera forward a little bit, maybe bring the seat up a little bit, depending on what aircraft I'm in. And then after that, I would never touch it again, right? So then I go back to the base profile and boom, we're set. Okay, but it's real nice when I'm in VR because I don't have to reach for the camera controls, right? Um, so that's one advantage of that as well. Uh, one other caveat that I will say with this uh, mapper mapping software that I have found is an issue is, for example, um, on the F-18, okay, any of the controls that are in this region that are on the forward con uh, cockpit panel, um, even though they, you can bind them to a key on the keyboard, for whatever reason, when you bind them to the stick, you have to have it in continuous mode. Okay, so that repeat continuous check mark, you have to have that selected for any of the buttons that are on the forward portion of the um, control panel, of the instrument panel. Okay, um, I'm not sure why. The F-18 is the only one I ran into so far that has that issue. I've talked to Avatar about it. He said he thinks it has to do with the way the real aircraft responds to keystrokes, to button pushes. It, has, it can't just be a bump of the button. Um, so that may very well be the case. Um, he said he found that in the NATOPS for the aircraft. So there are a few drawbacks, but again, there's only a couple that um, of buttons that I have found that that was even a, a problem, right? Because most of the buttons on the aircraft, like on the Hornet, you know, I reach up and use the mouse anyway. So something to think about there. But uh, I, anyway, I, w I won't keep rambling on about this. If you guys enjoy this, please hit that like and subscribe button. Um, there's much more content to be coming. We're going to got another KA50 video coming up where we're going to talk about navigation. We still got the review for the Fox mount uh, throttle and stick mounts for the Warthog coming out here, as well as the 10 centimeter extension from Sahaj. Uh, be on the lookout for those any day now. I'm just getting ready to wrap those up and get them out. Um, but other than that, guys... If you have any questions on how to use this, reach out to myself or Avatar on the forums. He's really good about responding to people. And uh, have a great weekend. See you next time.